Hey, what's up guys? My main gold deck just got to number one in the world and it's more of a monster than ever before. With the Evolved Knight and Golem tanking for the Lumberjack and Raged Up Dragons, when you get an Elixir advantage, this deck is utterly unstoppable. And because you have an Elixir Collector and a lot of ways of defending cheaply, that's gonna happen quite often. If you get two Elixir Collectors on the field in single Elixir, it's almost an imminent three crown. Opponents will have to offer up all their towers to the Lumberjack and Dragons as they sit there in sadness. It's time to evolve my main Golem deck into a three crown machine to assert maximum dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. Lots of love to everyone that's using credit code Sertai to support the channel. Yo, John finished 89 in the world, a challenger right now. Let's go. So we're gonna go in for a knight in the back first play. Just give our opponent the perception that we are definitely not running a golem deck, even though we 100% are. And we're gonna go for a barbell plus lumberjack. There's a chance he activates king tower with that lumberjack, which would make me a sad sir. Yeah, that's exactly what's gonna happen. So typically, I think cycling Lumberjack by itself is actually a pretty bad play. So maybe I will not do that in the future. He could go for a Magic Archer. I think that's kind of what he was planning on doing there. Or maybe he was stopping the knife from crossing the river. I don't know what he was doing. That doesn't make that much sense. Top 89 player in the world doing one of the weirdest plays I've seen in my life. Does not have Miner and Cycle anymore. So we can go for an Elixir Collector and drop that in the back. Or we can drop it in the middle. It doesn't really matter. I kind of want to activate King Tower against the Wall Breakers. So I'm going to drop my Elixir Collector in the back instead. We can still activate King Tower with a Miner on top of the... The King Tower as well. We can drop Knight, and that fully counters the Wall Breakers in this placement. If you guys haven't done that before, feels good, man. And then we're going to go Tornado the Magic Archer directly into the Knight, away from our tower. He only got one shot, so not bad, not bad. All right, so I got to go Golem in the back and build up a big push if I have any hopes of winning this. Obviously, <laughs> starting the game with our opponent having a King Tower is suboptimal for sure. We're going to try to make a prediction, and we do. We can snag the Miner. We're going to pull back the Knight with the Bar Barrel. Not going to take that much damage and go for another Elixir Collector. So the way that we win this matchup is you get like two Elixir Collectors on the field when your opponent doesn't have an ability of killing it, and then you're able to spam everything that you want and just stack up stuff right behind your Golem. I'm going to go for the Evolved Knight because I don't want to lose any more damage against the Wall Breakers. And then the Evolved Knight's going to pile on the pressure as well. It's kind of a little bit scuffed when the opponent realizes they have to go for Magic Archer and then the Magic Archer doesn't fulfill the bill. Especially if we can Tornado it away and then the Evolved Knight's still tanking for the Skeleton Dragons. He's then got a Tornado afterward. <laughs> it's pretty derpy to think about. We can cycle one more card and then get to another Elixir Collector and I think that might be the best bet. Let's go for a Bar Barrel here and maybe we can hit some Spear Goblins if we're super lucky with our timing. And then we can go in for a Knight. So we're going to eat the Wall Breakers or Spear Goblins and just catch the Miner. That's what we're hoping for. If we can just catch the Miner, that would be awesome. If we do not catch the Miner, we're eating the Wall Breakers. We're going to take a ton of damage in the process. So not necessarily the best trade, but we have hit Double Elixir successfully. And if he decides to go in for Magic Archer, well, it's not going to work that well because we do have Tornadoes. So be a huge Elixir investment for our dude. We're just going to make sure that it's off to the side so it can't break through and do as much damage as he's hoping for. Then we're going to go for a Barbarian Barrel and then we're going to go Lumberjack. Wait, he just spent his entire Elixir Bank. I don't know what he's banking on, but I don't think he can defend this. I don't think anyone in the world can stop this golem push at this point. We're going to go for Skeleton Dragons in the middle. We're going to space out our stuff so the Skeleton Dragons can immediately lock on top of the Bomb Tower. And then we can go for a Bar Barrel. And we're just going to stack up an insane amount of aggression. And that's why I love this deck. Even if your opponent's got some of the best defensive decks in the game with Bomb Tower, Tornado, and Magic Archer, even if they're a top 89 player in the world, they get disheveled and destroyed in seconds as soon as they make one mistake. I think this guy made a bunch of mistakes going into me there. He just didn't give me the respect, and well, he's not going to have a single tower left as a consequence. Despite the top ladder player getting an early King Tower activation, he still got completely clapped. So apparently, this guy is a part of the Lava Storm. So, if he's going to be storming through with the Lava Hound deck, I'm not extremely scared because I've played this matchup a million times. First things first, whenever you play against Lava Hound, drop your Elixir Collector in the back because if they've got Balloon, you don't want to go and pull the Balloon directly into your Elixir Collector in the middle. It's just not worth it. And if they mine on top of your Elixir Collector, you can always Tornado it directly to the King Tower using that Tornado placement right here. It can still catch the Miner even if it's in the outside placement. The best defense against anyone that goes in for a Lava Hound is dropping your Electro Dragon in the back first play. It's better than dropping Skeleton Dragons because the Skeleton Dragons can die to a Fireball, whereas the Electro Dragon is not going to die unless they Fireball plus Arrows, which is a lot of Elixir spent. And meanwhile, you can go for your Skeleton Dragons and other cards off to the side. And as you guys saw, he went for a Fireball plus Zap, but it still didn't melt the Electro Dragon. So great defense for us. We've already cycled back to another Elixir Collector, and he doesn't have Fireball and Cycle to hit our Elixir Collector, so we have a massive Elixir advantage. So having that type of confidence where you know what to do on defense, you just cycle the Electro Dragon first, that's the first card that you want to be dropping, and then you'll get a good trade. So I could decide to go for Tornado here, activate King Tower, or I could go Electro Dragon. I'm going to elect to go for the Tornado. It's just a bit cheaper and a little bit more reliable, so that's what we're going to roll with. 
and then we can go for our golem afterward because the balloon is the main thing that applies pressure. There's nothing else in his deck that is extremely scary. When we have two elixir collectors on the field and single elixir, generally a good rule of thumb to go in for your golem. That's when you know that you're going to be able to power through whatever your opponent can do, especially if they don't have the evolved barbarians yet. Remember, he's dropped like the regular ones. Doesn't necessarily get that scary if that's what he's going to do. Like he could, he could drop the regular ones because he hasn't dropped them yet. That's the one thing that I'm, I'm anticipating here. If he goes regular, we're just going to go for the Evolved Knight, and we're going to go for Lumberjack, and we're going to go Barbril. I think that cleans up all the regular Barbarians. So if he had the Evolved ones, their attack speed increases with each attack, and that's where it starts to get scary. So we're going to get Skeleton Dragons off to the side. We're going to lose the first Electro Dragon. We should get back to another one. Look at the Evolved Knight putting in work. And I'm expecting him to Fireball. We're waiting for the Fireball. Then we go Electro Dragon afterward, and we just keep up the pressure. The Evolved Knight is not taking damage. It's seriously going to have three crown him, I think. <laughs> this is such a joke. We are doing so much damage. The Evolved Knight finally falls, but that took forever to finish it off. And we can go Barbro as well. Wait, is the other knight going to pick up the slack where his brother fell? Yes, sir. <laughs> three crown city today. This deck simply cannot be stopped. Even Virus couldn't crack the code to stop our sadistic spam. Hey, Albert finished 248 in the world, and apparently he's addicted to Clash Royale. Well, let's see what's up. Or maybe he's addicted to something else. I don't want to just infer things that aren't true. We're going to go Skeleton Dragons in the back. A lot of times people split them, but I've come to the conclusion that if I split my Skeleton Dragons, they generally just give me no value, and I'd rather bait out a Fireball or a Poison, dropping them in the same side, and then get our opponent to be like, wait, I kind of messed up because I need that for the Elixir Collector or the Electro Dragon. Most cards that we split are going to be like Barbarians and stuff like that. Uh, this is not one of those cards. So he loses his Fisherman. Let's just Tornado this back so we kill the Skeletons, push back the Ghost, and make sure the Royal Giant doesn't get a single hit on our tower. Okay, this is a really good start, and we're going to identify what his big spell is right now. He can't activate King Tower with that Lumberjack because he's not going to be able to go and pull that with the Fisherman like he typically would. Wow. Okay. We'll see if he decides to go for a Fireball on the Skeleton Dragons or on the Elixir Collector. If he Fireballs on the Skeleton Dragons, that's totally fine because the Skeleton Dragons are still going to do a lot of damage to the Royal Giant before, and they don't even get knocked back by the RG, so it's totally fine for me. He spent so much elixir. He's in a really weird spot. Oh, he knows that we have Golem. He's even flexing the emote. Okay, all right, I see you, sir. Whenever you're playing against Fisherman or RG, the best way to win that matchup is gonna be what I show you guys soon. You need to hold your tornado and you can't use it on defense that often, because if you do, then your opponent's gonna be able to use Fisherman. And then if they use Fisherman, it's gonna just mess you up. Wait, we could maybe give him a King Tower activation with this Lumberjack. Maybe he'll take that. And, or we could pull the, the, the Fisherman. We pull the fisherman. Is that a play? Wait, is he not going to try to activate King Tower with the fisherman? He's not going to. He's just playing full offense with Royal Giants at the river 24 7. What is this guy doing? He's such a mad lad. Most of the time, people go in for fishermen and they try to activate King Tower against the Lumberjack because the Lumberjack gives us a little bit of a rage and then that rage spell will spill over onto the King Tower. So I thought he was going to do that, but maybe he would have felt uncomfortable without the fisherman in cycle because he needs to use that against the golem. Anyway. We can do two things. We can go for the knight in front to body block the fisherman if we don't end up having our tornado in cycle. Or alternatively, my favorite play is just use the tornado and mess with him that way. So we'll see what he decides to do. We're going to go for the knight and we can go and mess up the fisherman, I think. Yo, we got it. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Look at the evolved knight in all of its glory. It is not even close to dead. That thing is alive and thriving. You know what? The most BM tactic in Clash Royale is doing the Christopher Columbus Elixir Collector, exploring new uncharted territory, but I'm not that guy. I am not that dude. I would hate BMing our opponents, but I've seen people do that at top ladder, and it's just the most disrespectful thing in existence. This guy is getting dissected, and we didn't even need any of that elixir. That was one of the easiest three crowns ever against a top 250 player in the world, too. After that match, it's obvious that the rank one golem deck is extremely unfair. Hey, this guy's got the rare recruits banner. Probably not going to be playing that. A lot of people are just flexing the new season banner. We're going to go for a barbell here immediately and just test the waters. Maybe get some nice damage. If we can force out some amount of elixir and then go elixir collector in the middle, it's always fun. Oh, no, that sucks. If I ever play against rail hogs and they spam it at the river and then they're able to arrows or drop a small spell on top of whatever we defend and the elixir collector and our tower at the same time that's a three for one wombo combo for him and it's not extremely good for us but for the first time i feel slightly uncomfortable in this match also i'm not 100 percent sure if the fly machine is going to go and target my tower or the elixir collector i, I don't want to find out so i'm going to drop them the knight instead and then i think i can go for a golem we, we're up enough elixir we've got the knight counter pushing we can make something happen here plus probably not gonna be playing that got he! if he's gonna have royal recruits yeah he's gonna have royal recruits as we expected we want to stack up as many dragons behind the golem as possible without giving them good fireball bait 
So the strategy is you like to go for the Electro Dragon before you go for the Skeleton Dragons if you think that they have Fireball. And then when they Fireball the Electro Dragon, they try to kill it. Then you go for your Skeleton Dragons. You're like, well, now we have the Electro Dragon still alive. And we also have our Skeleton Dragon still alive. Whereas it wouldn't have been a similar outcome if you went for the Fireball immediately on the Skeleton Dragons. And then the Electro Dragon would just be chilling there and then get countered by like a Fly Machine or something. Oh, the Fly Machine fell. Let's go. <laughs> That's really, really good. Okay, so when you know that your opponent doesn't have a Miner or a Graveyard, you just drop your Elixir Collector in the back because now you open up the pathway for your King Tower activation with the Tornado and whatever win condition they got. So something to keep in mind if you guys are stupid like me and you end up not being able to hit your Tornadoes every single time or maybe you want to hit your Tornado and then you have the Elixir Collector. It's just like, wait, I, I can't do this anymore. So always try to prioritize the win conditions and just have that in the back of your head and immediately be decisive where you drop your Elixir Collector. Okay, we can maybe go for an Electro Dragon. We can also go in for our Golem in the back. Every time that I see Zappies and Rail Hogs are out of cycle, I like using my Golem to tank for stuff. Just for a little bit at least. Okay, we're going to go Skeleton Dragons. And that should be able to kill all the recruits on the right without us losing the tower. Then we can go Electro Dragon and we can go Barbril. Barbril's going to do a ton of splash damage right now, and that's going to be well worth it. Even if he fireballs plus arrows is on top of Electro Dragon. I don't know if he can stop this. He also has to stop the Skeleton Dragon from the right. He can't just let those things roll. Oh, Lumberjack! You're so smart! I love you, Lumberjack. Thank you for going towards the tower. I didn't even expect you to do that. I thought we were going to win the game on a later stage, but... Nah, dude, you put in the work. Okay, can we somehow stop this with the tornado? Can we stifle his offense? Can we stop him from taking a single tower? Meanwhile, the Evolved Knight is tanking for both towers from our opponent. And then the Lumberjack's just eating everything again. Why is Lumberjack so broken in this deck? It's crazy. <laughs> is this going to be another three crown? Say it ain't so, bro. Say it ain't so. We are on a strict diet of only three crowns today. And we are eating every tower we can. Hey, we got a game against the Grandmaster Goblin banner. So we'll see how sophisticated this guy's plays are going to turn out. We're just going to go in for a knight in the back to kick it open. And I don't know what he's going to have, but I would love to activate King Tower if he spams in the left-hand side. And he's not doing anything. So I think I'm going to go Elixir Collector in the back right. The knight's already protecting that side, so I feel more comfortable doing that. It's not like he can go in for a graveyard. And if he goes in for a miner, it's going to be really good for us because we can just go in for a tornado and activate King Tower on that. All right, so he's got Royal Giant Barbarrel Skeleton. So a very fast cycle Royal Giant deck it is. Likely going to have Fisherman, so I don't want to go in for our Golem until I actually have my Tornado in hand, and then I can build up a big push with our Electro Dragon or whatever else we need. You know what we can do? We go Skeleton Dragons on the right, and then Tornado to make sure he can't activate King Tower against the Electro Dragon. So we're just going to pre-Tornado whatever he decides to drop. Yes, we made him mess up. Those type of plays are really important. If you can't make those predictions, then you're going to give your opponent a free King Tower activation. And then if they've got a really defensive deck like this Royal Giant deck, you're probably going to lose the game. So just something to consider. I'm going to go for another Elixir Collector in the back. We're trying to get two Elixir Collectors on the field before we can actually feel their Golem push. With two Elixir Collectors, one Golem, and then one Tornado. That is our composition that we need. That's our recipe for success, if you will. We're going to go for our Golem right now on the same side as the Monk. We're going to make him think about going in. Oh, no. I really wanted to make him think about going in for that RG. We can still Electro Dragon here. We can't necessarily Bar Barrel, though. It would be really foolish if I did. I'm going to go in for our Lumberjack now. And then we're probably going to lose our tower. We're likely going to get Fisherman real quick. And then we can Tornado that. So we're going to deny a King Tower activation for the second time in this game. Or maybe he doesn't want to do that. He's going to Fireball. Jeez, this guy's really smart. I don't appreciate the fact that he's intelligent. All right, we're going to go for the Tornado here to stop the Fisher Boy from activating. No, it's still activating King Tower. Wait, he dropped it so far off to the right. This guy is really good at the game. Like, sincerely, super smart. I don't like this. I don't want to play against someone this good at Clash Royale. Can we still take tower? Let's go! Okay, the Evolved Knight should take the tower even if he fireballs the Skeleton Dragons. That's what we needed. All right, so now no fireball and cycle. We can go in for Elixir Collector in the back right. This is the sweatiest game I've played this season so far. So I'm going to be trying my hardest. We'll see if we can pull out the dub. Definitely know that he's going to try to go in for like a fish boy. So we're going to tornado everything. We're going to go Barbril. I don't know if that Royal Giant gets a hit. I don't think it does. Beautiful. That Barbril was incredibly necessary. All right. We can go in for Elixir Collector here. If he fireballs that or if he tries to do two fireballs on the towers. We do have Electro Dragon. So maybe we can go and do this. Knight. Can we go in for another tornado? Is there any shot that we defend against this Royal Giant two times in a row? That would be so crazy. If we could just get like the Lumberjack down and the Royal Giant doesn't get a hit. 15 seconds remaining. This guy will throw a fit if he loses this match. All right, we can go Golem in the middle. 
We're gonna make him drop a fisherman on defense. He's gonna try to cycle two fireballs, but if he fireballs, then he has nothing for the skeleton dragon to the other side. I bet you goes in for a fisherman, so we're gonna go in for a knight and make a prediction on the fisherman. He doesn't. Okay, is he dead? I, I don't know if he's able to stop this. If we go for a electric dragon and we space that out away from our skeleton dragons, he's not gonna be able to fireball everything at once. Is this gonna be another three crown? Wait, I want a three crown. I want a three crown. I want a three crown. Don't go towards the second tower. No. Okay, guys, let's be honest. That would have been a three crown if I was smart enough to just go towards the three crown. This guy was an incredible player, and I'm super happy to have crushed him. Yo, Jose, what's up, man? So he's going to have an Ice Wizard banner. Might end up having a graveyard deck if he likes Ice Wizard that much. And if that's going to be the case, I can't cycle my Lumberjack in the back unless I go in for a Knight in front. So this starting hand is awful. Every single time that you drop your Lumberjack, it's a chance of your opponent activating King Tower with the Tornado. So I... You know what? He dropped a Skeleton King. We're fine. He's not going to activate King Tower with that Lumberjack because the Skeleton King is going to body block it. That's really, really lucky for us. I'm fortunate that he did that. I was prepared to drop my Knight in front of the Lumberjack just to have a little bit of extra tank value. Oh, wait. What is this? I bet you it's a Mortar Bait deck. It has to be Mortar Bait. Oh, no. Is it Graveyard with Skeleton King and Inferno Dragon? Like, what? I, I'm so confused. I, I rarely see a skeleton army and Inferno Dragon cycled out the river like that, but I guess here it is. Oh, no, 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 stop! Skeleton Dragon, you pushed the Inferno Dragon, but you didn't push it far enough. I thought the skeleton dragons were thick, and they would push the Inferno Dragon far enough away that it wouldn't be able to hit my tower. You guys saw visibly that this Inferno Dragon got pushed back, but I guess it wasn't enough. That's crazy. Anyway, we're going to go Golem because we are up a lot of Elixir after that. He ended up dropping a baby dragon, and then fortunately the baby dragon turns towards the golem. It looked like it was going to prioritize my tower there too. I thought I was going to get immensely trolled. Fine though, we have Electro Dragon, and then we also end up having Lumberjack. So I think that this bowler is going to get screwed. I think it's going to get finessed. I think the bowler is going to get struck down. Maybe we can go in for like a Lumberjack afterward. We're just going to try everything that we have. Every possibility here. Oh, the Inferno Dragon is actually going to get reset. That's beautiful. I didn't know if that was going to happen. I thought the Inferno Dragon might be able to melt the Electro Dragon. Wait, is it still going to melt the Electro Dragon? Is he going to freeze? Because that's what I think he thought he could do. But maybe he can't. <laughs> it also sounds so weird saying he thinks that he thought he could do that. But I think he thought he could do that. <laughs> it's just a weird type of mentality to say those type of words together. Anyway, he's going to get a Baby Dragon rolling at us. He could go in for a spontaneous graveyard of the sorts. Let's just go for a knight and get to that evolution a little bit quicker and then go for our golem in the back. Wait, that was a really wacky tornado. Sure, you're going to get like 500, 600, or even 700 damage, but it's not as much as you need. Wait, are you going to graveyard with the bowler? Or what are... Okay, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Sometimes people just go all in and they're like, yeah, we can go for a graveyard freeze because that's what people do. It's so scummy. The freeze just does so much damage if you don't have a small spell. So you have to be prepared with either barbarrel or tornado when they do that. But now it's our turn to punish him. I want to three crown this guy so bad. So we're going to go for an Electro Dragon on the right hand side. Hopefully it chains onto the Inferno Dragon. If we're not unlucky, okay, cool. Lumberjack is coming through on the left hand side. We might be able to get a Barbarrel down. We're going to get everything that we can towards the three crown. Every single card that I own. My bank account is thrown at you, bro. And I think that you're going to atone for your sin of going in for the scummy Inferno Dragon Freeze. Every person that goes Inferno Dragon Freeze is one of the most tilting ways to lose. So we're getting redemption for everyone that's lost against that play. For me personally, I think that is the number one cheese play that I lose to in the game. So it's super satisfying swatting down that dirty Inferno Dragon deck. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos and have an incredible rest of your day.